People in the back, I'm gonna do some code. So if it's too small, let me know and I'll try and grow the font a little bit, yeah? Okay, so uh, I'm gonna talk today about a pattern that I adopted that's helped me get some performance into uh, some of the apps I write. And uh, to be totally honest, I'm, I'm a bit nervous. It's always nerve wracking to, uh, to hold your new ideas out for other people to criticize and potentially embrace, but also criticize. So um, if you don't like it, that's cool. Um, I, w I might cry, but, um, but be gentle. So, um, so yeah, a little about me. I'm a principal engineer. I work on a team with over 60 front end devs all committing to the same single page app. And that gets crazy because when you have over a million lines of, of our code, not like including our libraries, all on one single page app. That's nuts, right? You can imagine how crazy that gets. And uh, we've been doing it for four years and, and once in a while, occasionally we have to take some deep dives on performance and to take another look at the way we're doing some of these things because um, with that much code and that many people kind of isolated, not always working together, uh, things can get unwieldy. So, Perf really, really matters, and it's something that I focus on a lot. And that's kind of where this talk is coming from. So a quick special thanks. Uh, my friend Tyler Russell, he's been a, a, a mentor f for the last five years. Brokey and Schwarty, they worked with me on some of this stuff. And Jeff Cross also worked with me on some of this stuff. So special thanks to these four guys. So let me quickly define what is a component as a service. So in Angular, in AngularJS, if we want to put a component on the screen, we throw it into our templates, yeah? Is that how everyone does it? Yeah. So we, we, declare, it early, we declare it in our template, and then Angular or AngularJS spits out some DOM stuff for us, which is super nice. Well, components as a service, to get a component on the screen, you're going to make a call to a service to get it on the screen rather than putting it into your markup, okay? So that's, the, that's what I'm saying when I say component as a service, you're gonna get a component by calling a service versus uh, putting it into your template. And I hope to explain why, um, why this is a good idea. So I've, I've prepared a couple examples today that, that can help us walk through it. There's some symptoms that you might wanna look at this. Uh, when you start seeing some of these in your app, maybe consider doing some components as a service. When your first meaningful paint is like seconds long, you're seconds away from your first meaningful paint, uh, you might need to look at some of this stuff. A lot of us, uh, we have so many things not shown or they're NGF'd off or whatever, but uh, we're still seeing the price, we're still paying the price to, to really check to see if those things should be on constantly. And a lot of those things are 99% of the time, they're not gonna be used, right? Like a lot of times our modals are never used. So why would we put our modals in a template somewhere or some of our pop-ups are rarely, rarely used. And on some of these things where we have a lot of, where, we're, um, where we're, we have a whole collection or a collection inside of a collection of things, these things can get crazy. If changing routes is, is uh, something that's slow, then maybe you have a problem. A lot of times if you look in dev tools, if you look at, um, if you record your route change, sometimes it can take longer to tear down your old route than it can to set up your new route. And um, if, you can, if you see that, that it's taking longer to destroy your old routes than it is to make the new ones, then this, that's another symptom to look at. If your memory usage is, is blowing up or you feel like you got memory leaks, look at some of this stuff. If you can't even get your CSS transitions to be smooth, um, then something, something's not right. You, you've got too many DOM elements entirely, or you've got too much pressure on your memory, or something's going on. Um, in, in AngularJS, if your watcher counts are above 1,500, that's intense. And then uh, another thing you can try is putting console logs in some of your components when they turn on. And if you're needing components that aren't visible yet, then you've got a problem. Like that's, that, that's so, and especially if it's a component that, 
that you don't need for the initial part of the view or if it's a component that you don't need for that and it's not used 99% of the time. That's another symptom that you should be looking for. So there's a few ways to, to conquer some of these problems. Start lazy loading, um, helps relieve some of your performance problems and it helps take some of the pressure off your memory and it can improve your time to first meaningful paint. Um, getting some sort of a solid automation system around memory leaks, something that regularly runs through your app and checks where your memory usage was and then does that again five minutes later and consistently makes that you're, you're leaking memory at a constant rate and then it's not, it's not, it's not you know, blowing up overnight. And then the, the, a third one that's super solid is components as a service, which is what I'm going to talk about today. So uh, has anyone, I'm going to talk about a few examples. Has anyone here used Angular Material for AngularJS or for Angular? Yeah, looks like a lot of us have. Um, so they actually have this, this uh, paradigm in their code as well. Um, when you go to make a dialogue, uh, you open a dialogue by calling a service, yeah? You inject the reference to it and then you can open your dialogue that way. Um, NG Prime, has anyone used NG Prime? Any NG Prime users? Yeah, a couple people, okay. So NG Prime also has this kind of a paradigm where you get components through calling services as well. <coughs> and uh, so yeah, so I'm gonna walk through some code and it's gonna get, I'm gonna show a, a sample app I made and I'm gonna show it to you without components as a service so you can see kind of what's going on and kind of what we can look for. And then we'll look at the component as a service version. And then, um, I'm, I, I have a, a smaller demo for, or for a, a very specific way how to do this in Angular 2, which it's not as easy. So, um, so yeah, so let's walk through this, uh, through this app real quick. Okay. Yeah, I'll make it bigger, bro. Sorry. Okay, can you guys see this? Can you guys see this app? Is that big enough in the back? Okay, I see a thumbs up way back there. Okay, so does anyone recognize this app? Has anyone ever used an app like this? Yeah, we've all used the chat, right? We've all done something like this before. So um, if you haven't written it or uh, if you've done a Firebase app, then <laughs> that's like the, usually the hello world in Firebase apps is this app, so. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of a chat application and it, it, it kind of helps show off in a very light way how some of our large apps can get out of control. So when we, so when you look at like this view, there's maybe 40 messages and 40, um, 40 people's avatars in there, right? So we shouldn't have a completely unwieldy amount of, of components turning on. But I'm going to go ahead and click on this next channel, and we had we had well, let's let's clear this out again and try it again. Okay, so this is what happened when we turn this on, right? So this is a component turning on. And we had 55 of this one, 55 popovers turned on. Uh, we had a bunch of other popovers with a bunch of tooltips and some avatars all turned on. So. Uh, some of these things we knew were happening, like the messages and the avatars. We definitely don't need modals, popovers, or tooltips turning on when we first pin our view, right? And this is something that a lot of us are doing. We're getting our tooltips ready when the view turns on. And we're getting our popovers ready and our modals prepared when the view turns on. And this is what Components as a Service is, is all about. Um, so when I, when I hover this avatar, it goes ahead and it throws up this tooltip. Right? So 99% of the time, people aren't going to hover over your avatars. So putting tooltips on that seems like a, an insane amount of waste. It seems like you could, I mean, we, when you look at how many, how many components we bootstrapped, we should have been able to turn that view on only having bootstrapped maybe 40 or 50 components. But as you guys saw, we had well over 100 turned on there. And so we should be able to cut on this simple, simple view, I mean, no one here works at a company building an app this simple. 
And we should be on this app, be able to shave off at least two thirds of the knitting of the components. Just because they're not things that are required 99% of the time. So when you're in a chat app, how many times, what percent of the time do you click on it to get like the, the pop-up menu? Like rarely, yeah? And then what percent of that do you actually click like the edit button? Even less? Well, I got the modal on the screen ready to go. Like the modal's in my template, and guess how many of them I got? I got one of them for each message. And guess why I have that? Because that's how we architect stuff sometimes. And we don't think about it because Angular's so easy. It, it didn't say, hey, uh, yo, don't put modals inside of this thing because that's bad. But that's what I'm here for. So, um, so yeah, if I, and if I click this, I got a modal. Like, this is, this is awesome. Um, the, I painted all these modals and all these pop-ups. And I got this tool tip with everyone's name in it. And I got these tool tips that aren't hardly going to get used. But I got all these things that make for a good user experience, right? You want tool tips on things so that when they hover over it, like there's a tool tip that's like something will happen when you click this. Like tool tips are a good part of the user experience. Pop-ups, good part of the user experience. Modals, good part of the user experience. I'm not saying don't use these things. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you either need to delay them on the load or you need to not load them at all until they're required. And that's what Components as a Service helps do. Okay? So I wanna, I'm going to look at some of the code for this stuff. Now, who, who here, I already saw some hands. I don't think everyone raised their hand. Who here writes AngularJS still? Okay. Who here still writes AngularJS? Everyone raise your hand. Come on. All right. Okay, so about a third of us. Who here works at a company where we still have AngularJS? Okay, so a lot more. All right. So a lot of these examples, because most of the Angular in the world, by a humongous portion, most of the Angular that exists is AngularJS. So m these first examples are in AngularJS. It's a slower language, which is why I thought these examples could be more helpful for AngularJS. But I have examples um, at the end for Angular as well. So um, I'm going to go through some of this code. The first thing I want to look at is this message. It's just one of these messages that gets created. Can you tell me when I have like five minutes left? Okay. I'm gonna keep. I'm just gonna show until we have five minutes left. So, all right. So let me go look at the code. Um, can you guys see that? Is that good in the back? Okay. I got another thumbs up. That's good. Okay. So uh, here's the message component. All right. So here's my template. This is the template that you see 100% of the time. And then this is the part of the template that you, you don't see 99% of the time, right? And we can add a bunch of NGFs to this stuff so that, um, and we can start tracking NGF properties like on our controllers and stuff. But um, an, and an NGF will save us some of that loading. It still doesn't clean up the component any. And you also have a bunch of overhead on your logic for tracking the booleans for, the, uh, for ng-ifing your items. And this is a very simple message. Some messages in some of our apps or in some of our components will have several modals tied to them, like several possible modals that can be opened from there. Um, or several different tooltips, uh, or I mean, maybe dozens of tooltips, actually, and uh, several different popovers. So this one's actually pretty simple. It only has one of each. So, um, so yeah. And to turn these on, um, I just flip a boolean, right? That's how we, that's how we do it. So in order, for it, in order for it to watch that boolean flip, uh, we had to init it. So that's actually already been compiled. The template's ready to go. It's, 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 it's in Angular, ready to go. Um, and so if you look up here, when I click on the message, I go ahead and I toggle the message popover. That's all I do, right? This is, th this is code that all of us understand. I'm just walking through and make sure we understand what we're doing because I'm about to show you this same thing uh, with component as a service. So, um, and then for the, for the popover, it's kind of the same thing. When you have the avatar, um, oh, sorry, this, this shows the, the popover. And then when you, on the popover, if you click the edit button, it will 
uh, show the edit modal. And show the edit modal, all it does is flip that Boolean, right? So these are very simple things. This is probably exactly what you thought I was doing. Um, in the avatar, uh, let me show you the avatar one real quick as well. So the avatar component is very similar. Um, it's an image. This is the avatar component, right? And then this is all the rest of the rubbish that you, you don't see that I emitted, OK? So this is all, I mean, imagine, look at how many, how many watchers or how much change detection has to go on for this template that isn't being used most of the time. It's quite a bit. So OK, so now you've seen this. I'm going to go ahead and show you the component and service versions. Okay. So, so this is the same app. Um, let's do this. Come on, don't do this to me. Okay, way better. All right. Not way better. Okay. Well, I don't know why this is still an idiom. One second. Did I screw some up? No, I got it. All right, I'm going to walk you through the code real quick. Okay, so in my uh, message component, my template from a message is now exactly what we thought it was going to be. My template from my popover is cut out into its own template, and my template from my modal is cut out into its own template. Now when I click toggle message popover, five minutes. All right. So this thing will, he, now he goes ahead and he creates the popover. So to create the popover, he calls component service dot create component. He passes it the template, the anchor, or the thing that he wants it to be anchored to. Uh, the anchor is so that it knows how to position it. And then it passes the data that's going to get put onto that, that component's controller or to that component's scope. And um, so yeah, this is how the uh, this is how you make a component of service. Let me show you this component service real quick. Okay, so the component service, it's a simple service, has a create component API. And create component, it takes in some options the template, the anchor, and then the data that's going to put onto the components controller scope. If you don't pass in uh, a template, it'll go ahead and error so that you find out quickly at dev time that you're screwing up. Um, if you don't pass in an anchor, it will anchor to the body. Uh, if you do pass in an anchor, it will, it will go ahead and anchor it to that element. Um, if you pass it, it has some magic methods on it for on success that you can go ahead and use in your template. And if you pass those in, then it will wrap them inside of its own on success. Um, it creates a new scope, puts your data that you pass in onto that new scope, turns your template into a jQuery object, appends that to the anchor, and then it compiles it using Angular. Right? And then at that point, it returns you an object with an API that you can call destroy on, so that when, you're, when your component destroys, you can destroy. The, the component you compiled on the fly. And then it also um, returns a result, which is a promise that you can dot then on to subscribe to when it gets closed, like automatically. So if someone closes or destroys your component for you, if you, subs if you, you can just subscribe to, those, to that event through the promise that gets returned to you. So yeah, all right. So this is an example of a component of the service. The code's up on my GitHub repo, if anyone wants to go check it out. I'm going to go ahead and show you the same thing for Angular, which was um, significantly more difficult to build. But let me go ahead and show it to you. So this demo is very simple. This is um, in the code. If I pull up my component, um, in my 
In my component, if I click the first button, it's going to call this material dialog and open it. Okay? And I just pass the material dialog this reference to the co component I wanted to compile. So unlike Angular 1, where I pass it a random DOM string that I wanted to compile, in Angular 2, uh, you could do that, but you're going to have to ship the compiler into production, which I wouldn't recommend. So what you're going to need to do is you have to ship, you have to provide to this, this component of the service service the actual component, a reference to the component that you wanted to compile for you. And so when I click that first button, it goes ahead and makes an MD dialog, right? That's exactly what we wanted it to do. So the second component, that's going to use the service that I wrote, because not everyone's going to want to pull in uh, any other material to do some of their things. And not everything you need is going to be a dialog. Maybe you, maybe you have some other things that you're going to want to do. So I built this spawn service. So I could show as an example how you can spawn a new component without putting it in your markup in Angular 2. So when I click the second thing, um, so I'm going to make a new, a new context, which is the data that is going into the inputs on this component. Because this data takes, this component takes inputs. So this context is the data that's going to get passed in, or the data that's going to get, or that's going to use as the outputs as well. And then when I call this spawn service, I say, hey, um, this is the component I want you to, com to, to create, and I want you to use this, this outlet to attach it to. So yet when you call this function, you, you have to be able to pass into it some place in the DOM you want to attach it to. And then the last thing I pass in is the context. And so in my current, um, in my current view, one minute, all right. So in my current view, I have this outlet called dummy outlet that's just at the bottom of the view. And when I come over here and I click this, it's going to create the new component, and it just puts it into that outlet right there. Okay. Now, sometimes you're not going to want to provide that. right? Like I definitely don't want to do that most of the time. Um, this counter that's going up is showing that the two-way data binding is working. Uh, or not the two-way data binding, but that if you push a new value into the input, it will the component will get those updates live. So it, it stays, it, it, as long as you pump it in using an observable, um, it will keep updating, it will keep pushing those input values into it. So you're not, you haven't lost um, the binding on the input values. All right, so now the last thing I'm going to do is on the third example where I show another thing, I actually didn't want to pass in the port for it to. I didn't want to pass in the thing I wanted to attach it to. So I wanted to attach it to the body. So um, I made it so if I pass in an undefined, it will just select it and pass it to the body. Uh, it will still do the exact same thing. Uh, the title will be another, another thing. And then I'll keep updating the title on the fly. So there's that one. You notice it attached it directly to the root of the body. It's down there at the end because I didn't provide an outlet for it to, to put it into. And um, it keeps pumping data into that. Um, in, it keeps updating the context title, and then on that reference to the to the to the spawned element, it just keeps pumping it in through calling next on that observable, and it's good to go. So, okay, uh, real quick, let me show you this spawn service. Um, I'll put this out on GitHub because this wasn't super easy for me to figure out how to do. There wasn't a lot of examples for me to see. So, um, so yeah. Uh, you have to pass in the type of the component which you import. It will go down here, and it will it will create the component. It will first has to find the factory of that component. Once it has the factory, it can create the factory using the view control or the view that you passed in, or it will it'll just use the app reference to get a view to then be able to pa attach it straight to the body. Um, it wires up all the outputs so that if you any of the output methods get called, it will notify. And then same for the inputs, it wires those up. And if you pass in the context as an observable, it will use the observable you passed it. Otherwise, it will create a new observable and pass that back to you that you can then pump into it. So anyway, I'll put this out on GitHub for anyone to check it out. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or on GitHub, create an issue on it. But yeah, so that's Components of Service. Come talk to me afterwards if you have any questions. Thanks.